We're going to show you the new PetSet API in Kubernetes 1.3 using persistent storage with an example written by Comcast that does Yarn, Spark, and Hadoop on Kubernetes. First, we'll show the two minion nodes, TLX 242 and 243, and the DNS pods that are going to be needed for running the Yarn cluster. Here is our Yarn cluster namespace with a persistent volume claim that will be mapped to the, the data nodes for Hadoop running in the pod. Now here's the YAML that will be called by the persistent volume claim that will be attached to the particular pods. This one is going to be for DN0 on the YARN cluster. Read write once allows for us to have a single container writing to that 100 gig volume at a given time. And we're looking for a volume ID for DN0 so that it's only written to only one of the, the pods that has DN0. Now this is the persistent volume driver that is going to be set up with Kubernetes. And this will coexist and be called by this persistent volume claim for DN0. This is, again, going to be a 100 gig volume. It's going to be using the flex volume driver. And it's going to be using the Deterra iSCSI plugin with the XFS file type. And the back end store server is going to be TLX170, which is one of the Deterra storage nodes on the back end. This driver will provision all of the volumes without ever having to go directly to TLX170. It will be called out by these persistent volume claims and the persistent volumes upon inception of the YARN cluster in Kubernetes. Now we're going to run the make command to start up our YARN cluster. We'll watch the pods get created, and these are running HDFS, YARN, and Spark, and a Zeppelin front end so that we can write the various kinds of code that will be executed on YARN and Spark. You see that we have a 100 gig volume that was created when we made the Yarn cluster. Now we'll take a look at the Spark front end and the Yarn front end, as well as the Zeppelin side. So we load Zeppelin, we're going to save the interpreter bindings, and we're going to run our example test. This will be running two executors to do a Hadoop job. So we'll go ahead and we'll take a look at the Spark jobs, and we'll see we have two executors right now. The job is almost complete, and it's done. We'll see that it's finished in Zeppelin. Now we're going to scale this up and over-provision the amount of, of executors that will be done by Spark. This time we're going to add 12 instances, so we're over-provisioning by about two, because we're going to only use about 10 more. We're going to scale up only about 10 more Spark instances. First we're going to add about five more data nodes as a part of this execution. So we just patched and made five additional data containers that are going to be spun up, and those will create the Deterra volumes automatically for us. No need to go into the UI. This is just a demonstration to show you that they've been created when we started up more of the data nodes. Now we're going to do more of the compute side, so we're going to scale to 10. Remember, we did only 12 of the Spark ones, but we're going to only use 10 right now. We'll run all paragraphs again. We'll take a look at Spark. We're going to run a DFS report, which is sort of another test inside of this, to show you that the fifth volume from the bottom, which is going to be DN2, has already started using some space. So we have about 99.95 gigs free, but you can see it that it's already being consumed. Now here's our 10 executors that are running. It's almost complete. Job's done, and we'll go back into the Deterra UI just to see that this is the volume that's been created. We'll clean up everything, and what will happen after the entire Yarn cluster and HDFS cluster is cleaned up, we only have the DNS stuff left over, but you still see the storage that's available that can be reused at any given time. 